Les Ambassadors in the heart of London's West End is playing host to one of the biggest cash games in town. It's the Party Poker Big Game. It's all change in the big game, a 48-hour cash game. Neil Channing, in from the very first hand and a constant at the table throughout the hours, has finally met his match when player power had its say and he found himself out. He survived various evictions and steadily built his stack at the table, but in the end, the format was too much for Channing to survive. And survival is the name of the game, as this is poker at its rawest. 48 hours worth of action, formidable opponents, fluctuating fortunes, and a ticking clock. Welcome to the big game. In its fourth incarnation, it's getting bigger and better each time. There's been plenty to whet the appetite. Oscar-nominated actresses, seasoned poker pros, internet superstars, they've come and gone over the last 30-odd hours, some willing others by player evictions. What the hell, why would you? Only two have stood the test of time. Can they continue to do so? Roland DeWolf is fighting against the odds, but sticking in there. Robert Williamson III is back. Having suffered an eviction, he's out to prove a point, and so far, so good. Ellis Rubin took the place of a battered Oscar Pardo and has steadily built up his stack. He suffered a few setbacks along the way, but is still there. Guy Steele won his place at the table the hard way. Qualifying through a satellite tournament, he certainly got a taste for this cash game. No one can afford to take their eyes off Biffer. He's running the roost at this table and starting to really flex his muscle. His aggression has kept them clear of the dreaded eviction and little looks like changing. Tony G brought this table to life but paid a heavy price to start with. He's turned things around in spectacular style. It's now looking good for the irrepressible Tony G. Luke Schwartz took the seat of the evicted Neil Channing, but so far he hasn't inherited Channing's luck. Down at the moment, but determined to stick it out. Bill Locke has been slogging away at this table, lurching from black to red on the profit and loss ledger. And that ledger tells its own tale. Tony G leads the way with over 30K. Robert Williams III on his second visit, 21K to the good. Ellis Rubin hit the heady heights of 40K at one point, but he's now dropped down to 12K, but still looking good. After a brief rest, coming back to the table, triumphant return by Neil Channing. He's back, burning with a sense of injustice at his eviction. He's the man to watch as he plots his revenge. Uh, I think I just had time to whinge in some uh, interview, a couple of interviews. Uh, had a general kind of uh, storm around the place, stamping my feet. Uh, I just got into the commentary box. I watched one hand, uh, and during the hand, Tony G said, oh, "Actually, I think I might go now," which he already told me like 20 minutes before he was thinking about. Uh, so they might as well have not vote me off, really. You know, Neil Channing, uh, Dusty, and, and welcome back, by the way, Dusty. <laughs> but uh, you look at him and you think, wow, this guy has got it all together. He's been playing 35 hours straight. He's playing great. He's got his wits about him. I'll tell you, uh, 25 minutes he was in the booth here. <laughs> and we had a little glimpse on the inside of Neil's mind. I think he's barely holding it together, as is this whole table. Yeah. These guys have all, uh, you know, some may not have been at the table the entire time, but these guys, uh, uh, namely Robert Williamson, who hasn't spent a whole ton of time at the table, but he has been up for at least two or almost three days. Uh, so uh, he, he's got to be getting pretty tired, but he doesn't look like it. Yeah, and Ellis Rubin's put in a monster session uh, since he got here. Uh, even Phil Locke, you know, he's, uh, I think, verging on the 24-hour mark. Viffer. Viffer the entire time. Yeah, and, you know, Viffer still capable of making, obviously, incredible plays. Uh, however, um, you know, he, just, <laughs> he is looking like he's having to concentrate a little more. 
and I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the new blind levels and stakes are, but suffice it to say there's been some sort of agreement that it's gotten bigger. Um, and right back off, now Channing moving into the seat vacated by Tony G. And the raise, the re-raise, the re... Oh, it's one. raise No, no, Vifers called the 1700. This pot's big now. And how much trouble do you think Channing's going to be in overall? Or is, is, is Viffer worried? No, I don't think he'll lose too big of a pot here, uh, especially not now. <laughs> now that he's flopped three sevens. But uh, it's one of those hands where you can usually get away from pretty easily post-flop if you don't flop a big one. She obviously has. Right, and now Viffer's down to a situation where... Yeah, he's down to a situation where he's, uh, if he was, he's only really behind, in his mind, to the hands he was behind pre-flop, right? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Viffer's hoping he's got a hand like two over cards, you know, king, queen, ace, queen, ace, king. And so he's going to look him up for now. I suppose he'd probably find a fold if we get a big Broadway card coming on the turn, but if it pairs the board like a four or something, it could be tough for him. This pot nearly nine grand. Viffer's got a club here, and uh, why has Channing cho chosen to check behind? N now he's. Wow. How has uh, how has no money gone into this pot past the turn? Well, I actually had a similar hand against Isaac Hax, and a lot of it is. Uh, you know, you just don't want to put yourself in a sixth spot on the turn because Viffer's capable of doing something like taking, you know, calling with like a ace with a pair on the flop uh, and then check raising you for your whole stack on the turn with the club and you just don't want to find yourself in that kind of position Channing a man on a mission and getting the better of Williamson more to come after the break Neil Channing leads the way in the big game for Robert Williamson, the third losing out after his most recent clash with the Englishman, but still in second spot. Biffer and Rubin in profit, but that's not the case for DeWolf, Steele, Locke, and Schwartz. Zero to the bluffs, you know, my style. The station, man. That's me. Viffer's got the dark glasses back on. The better to hide his eyes. And, uh, well, Luke's has a big hand. And he gets no credit for anything, so we could, s <laughs> could see a good pot here. Yeah, I feel, I feel a bit... Uh, so Schwartz has made a raise size more like I predicted earlier and making it 600 pre-flop. He'll be a bit aggrieved if he can't get a call from Ellis at least. Not sure what Ellis has, but he's certainly been, oh, and oh, we got. get a call. Well, and uh, may he get more than that. Ellis has been sort of playing the do sevens pretty fast. And this is something we haven't seen in a while, the do seven against the big pair, right? Potential for a lot of pre-flop action. Oh, yeah. Marty. Didn't you meet some friends of mine in a hotel room in Ireland? Called Marty. He's gone for the call, and I guess what that's going to mean, or does that mean, I mean, that he's going to try and, and make plays on certain kinds of flops and turns? I don't think he's just trying to hit a... You know, a, a, a lucky flop or anything. I think he certainly has a plan to uh, attack Schwartz uh, at some point. And this is a perfect flop for Schwartz. And the real perfect thing about it is Ruben's got a piece of it, and is 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 going to have to do something. And so he's just going to lead right into it. Looks like 1,400 pounds in it. It's pretty reasonable play. He, he goes heavy, and Schwartz will look at that. And now you don't want to chase your customer away, but what does that bet size say to you? Well, I think he's he's going to be you know totally full of it, or or he's going to have some type of ace jack, ace ten, trying to find out where he stands. He's going to three bet pocket sevens, ace queen, all those hands. So he really can't have a hand, but maybe ace seven. 
But either way, Schwartz in position, so he knows that uh, he's going to find a bet on the turn either way, if it's calling or, as in this way, the check from Ruben, the chance to get some money in. Yeah, he can kind of encourage him to keep bluffing. And, uh, you know, the board's, you know, it's not real draw heavy, so there's not a whole lot of ugly cards for uh, Schwartz. I mean, there's really no ugly cards uh, that, uh, you know, obviously he's hoping for a seven in this situation because then Ruben's going broke for sure. But he makes the correct read. He certainly did. And for Luke Schwartz, a little pick up there. From the button. That's it. Okay? Okay. I don't want to straddle them. The tough you uncle just came in there and laid down the law. And the he kids certainly aren't very did. Happy. The <laughs> tournament director said, This is the way it is. I have to. <laughs> well, then we have no game. I'm really not. Three, three twenty-five. Three hundred and twenty-five is the bet. Three hundred and twenty-five. Nine hundred flat. Raise to nine hundred. This is what's been going on. And as we've seen, Locke capable of the four bet. And if he makes the four bet, how often does it get through? And is the wolf starting to be ready for it? And all that stuff comes into play. It's going to be pretty hard for the wolf to fight back. I think if uh, he puts in a four bet, it'd probably work. But it looks like Ziffer's come along with a hand. Right, and that will uh, definitely slow lockdown. When guys call in this position, it's almost always some type of hand that they won't be able to commit their whole stack to. So it should actually sweeten the pot in some ways to actually make a squeeze raise. Uh, if you Phil Locke. Yeah. Very, very close. This is, this is like, I, I seem to remember something like this before, where uh, Locke's raise with sort of the, the junkiest kind of hand, and he's the one who's kind of hit the junky flop. But this has changed things completely. Yeah, I suspect uh, oh. we got a bet going on the turning river here. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I think Phil didn't even call pre-flop, so... What is this? I thought that you were like, you took like, you did it the American thing. That's strong right there. Is that binding? No, I thought you guys, you like compute, you tricked wow. me. These guys got all the tricks. Check bet call for two grand. DeWolf's probably happy enough to take the cheap showdown now, or, well, now he will be. Hearts are in play. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he goes for some value here. Wow. Is he representing a right there, Yeah, it certainly is. 7,600 pounds, all in. And what can Viffer beat that the Wolf's bet for value? I mean, has the Wolf bet for value? I don't think he knows what he's doing. <laughs> I think he's just putting his chips in and hope he wins it. It's not a tournament. He doesn't know if it's for value or Bet or what? You're, it's not, you're not involved. He's giving, he's giving you, he's giving you a Ellis, it's not your point. Is this a right? bluff or for value? What do you think? I, I, I can only I think that, that when Viffers called that still, uh, on the turn, that part of his range has to be the hearts. So, I mean, the wolf cannot pet all in for value once that heart. I mean, I'm just guessing here. So he has to be bluffing. You know what well, I'm saying? Viffer, if it didn't Viffer... Uh, yeah. So Viffer, uh, excuse me, DeWolf led into Viffer and Viffer No, called. no, no, De, De, De Viffer checked. Uh, Viffer was in the... Viffer checked. Yeah, uh, DeWolf's behind the button and, and, and Viffer's in the straddle but position. But if you do that and I raise you, then that's a call. I, I mean, I'm just like guessing. Took it down. I mean, like, so DeWolf wins. Yeah. D so I think DeWolf like, didn't think he was capable of check calling so it much the um, it. turn with a flush draw. I think he thought Viffer would have left out and kind oh. of semi-bluffed it. Right, So I think okay. he kind of ruled out hearts there and just went for value. But no, but no one told me. He told you he was... Let's have a poker news pot. Oh! It's a poker news pot. And Williamson's put the live eight on, and I mean, uh, is this in his favor or is this just straight out gambling? It's gambling. This is straight out gambling. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Must be nice when the turn reactor comes down. He probably feels like Santa Claus. Here. Yeah. This great philanthropist just throwing money into the pot. Thanks, poker news. <laughs> Walk a mile to the Chesterfield across the ocean for a poker news pot. And uh, 
is there a, is there a strategy for how to how to deal with the 800 live straddle? I mean, it's <laughs> at this point, I don't even know anymore. You just hope you have the best hand. <laughs> well, Miffer's chosen to call here, and I mean, this is effectively playing like. Gosh, I don't even know. I have not like looked a 400, 800, or 500, 1,000 <laughs> hand. I mean, this is huge stacks. Everybody here is effectively a short stack now. And uh, what a big surprise that everybody has, has woken up with something playable. <laughs> there you go. He could have anything. He could have anything. I need the cards from the glass. Isn't it big enough? God, I, I wonder, I wonder who knows he could have anything. The guy just raised me like He's times. done it before. He's done it several times this session. But he got the money wow. in first. That's brutal. He's put a lot of money in here. There's so much money in the pot. Mm -hmm. This this actually isn't a bad play to just put your stack in, huh? No. <laughs> make make people have a hand. Okay. Oh, and, and lock, I mean, Locke's done it. He, if you get called by Ace Queen, you're not in too bad a shape. Before I look, Phil, if I call, will you at least buy me dinner? I'll let you three Williamson one, will you want know. to call. I don't think he will. Anybody? <laughs> 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 Give me twenty one He wants to call so bad. Yeah. He's just. He may just not be able to help himself. I think he knows he's ahead and is like, geez, do I really need to take a sixty forty for twenty thousand pounds? Do I want to? Or do I need to? Do I want to? You're not going to get a read off, Phil. God, he's so sick. He wants to so bad. Sorry, I'm really torn. I apologize. No I never take long ever no, 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 take your time. He is really no, torn. He, he is really torn. I, I, I think, uh, you know, I think that's starting to factor in is that this is a large chunk of money and that he's pretty, you know, he's looked at Phil long enough to feel like he is ahead, and now he's just wondering... <laughs> Does he want to take on a gamble this big? Now it's a, I mean, yeah. it's a big game, so you have to take on gambles th this big. But Robert does play the sort of style that he doesn't look to take on gambles this big this exactly. early. Exactly. This is kind of against you know everything he's done so far. If he makes this call, and the players there showed him a lot of respect. You know, Robert's such a great guy. They'd let him take another 10 minutes if he wanted to. Yeah. So. I, he's not wondering anymore if he's ahead. He's decided he's ahead, and now it shows he want to take the gamble. I think that's it. <laughs> Robert, you have 30 seconds to act. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> he's on the clock now, Dusty. Yeah, and I think Marty just did him some favors here. Just you know, he needs a, a, a kind of a clock on him. I think he's a, it's actually a good thing for you, him. You got to get put on a clock sooner or later. It, you know, it's 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 poker. He's ha and uh, I don't know. It's it's ten seconds or the hand's dead. Well, Marty will count down the final five Same. or the final ten. Can I get a quarter at least? Can I get <laughs> five? Are you gonna call it dead? Four. Quarter. Three. Wow. And uh, it, it'll, what will be really interesting is now if so, someone else decides to stall. Yeah, I'm hoping they've made their mind up already. Well, Schwartz has had adequate time to think. He might just throw it in. Huh. Wow. You'd think he'd have made up his mind because you know he's thinking what I'm going to do if it comes around to me. <laughs> Everybody knows he's weak. They just—it's a lot of money. One person saying one word. It is a lot of money. I want possible prop bets. Possible prop bets. He is dead on them. If you would have called him, I would have got the fill. I would have taken half of the. He's got such a sick kind. I—I don't know. I think seven two is a part of his range. You really can't talk about the game. He's, he's, he's a really, I, I don't, he's a sick kind of reader of hands. I, or he's just, or he's just talking at the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big old pot.
Now, listen, Dusty. Uh, overall, overall, if 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 Locke's hand is face down in this situation for you, would you rather call with the sixes or the ace nine? That's that's pretty tough. Um, well, you have to call with one of them. I'm I, giving you a choice. Yeah, I'd probably call it the sixes ahead of the ace nine. I think it probably has slightly better equity against his range. Do you want to collect 50 from each? 500 from each? I had two fours. How's he not going to show? <laughs> Phil! <laughs> Phil, come on! Wow. Give him a little... Wow. Give your man... Give him a little... Uh, give him a little something, Phil. <laughs> you know, for the effort. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I got it through the thousand pounds. Of wow. All that for that. And, uh... Um... <laughs> Phil Lock. Phil Lock. Gotta love this man. What a sick guy. Gotta love this man. I thought that was within your ring. That's why I folded. <laughs> you guys have to uh, get a, a thing for it. Oh. His oh. and and he's kind of committed, guys. Deal. I think he's sort of committed to doubling up or or, or, or going home and or you know and get, getting out and not taking any chips with him so uh, there's there's actually at some point there's going to come this line of demarcation when he needs to sort of just start you know if there's any chips in the pot just start shipping with with kind of weaker hands than what he's looking for uh, isn't I, and, and I don't, it's almost like a tournament i don't I'm not really sure what the line is and stuff but he's only got 3500 pounds and I don't know, there's just this, you know, he's not that far away. I mean, he might be a round of the table away. I'm not sure. You know, the, a round of the table right now is 25, 50, 100 plus 200. So Yeah, it's plus a seven deuce in there. <laughs> right, I mean, so. Well, I think they're about to get a rude awakening here. Well, it looks like lock, uh, well, it's on to lock now. And uh, he just calls, so. So. Ruben re-raised this sort of from the big blind up to grand. Yeah, and then Locke, interestingly, he's just slow playing this the whole way. Yeah. That's exactly the flop you don't want when you're Check. slow playing. But I don't suspect they'll get rid of him just straight away on the flop. Check. Check. If I had ace-queen, I would have, would not have fought. Ace-queen, ace-king. So Locke's going to go uh, into a pot control mode. And that's, that's really the perfect card for Locke. He's obviously like a jack, but that's probably the second best card. Makes it very, very unlikely that anybody hasn't beat at this point. And I don't think anybody's going to have any success bluffing him. A, a really weird delayed continuation bet from, from Ellis Rubin, right? It, it just, it's just so, so weird. Yeah, I guess he's repping like he didn't like the king and maybe he had like an ace 10 or jacks but for the most part once you kind of give up on the flop there you should probably just go ahead and give up in general and is Channing in this sort of wow. well not anymore but I was going to say he could have been in this weird place where he was going to have to make a thinking about that he might beat Ruben but Locke might beat him and he was going to have to make some psychotic <laughs> psychotic play to get Locke out right. if Ruben had bet but um, he's capable of it but uh, obviously as we know Locke would you know, he'd call up his bank and try and get a bank wire to come in here if someone raised him so he could just re-raise more. That bet by Ruben on the turn, and Channing did just call. That's that's his, you know, the way he plays these sort of, 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 of hands. But was it such a fishy bet by Ruben on the turn that actually he needed to make a little play there, or was that just such hindsight? Well, results? a lot of guys will just raise if they... These guys all had made hands, which is a lot of the reason why they just called. But uh, if they had a real hand, or excuse me, if they had no hand at all, it, it looks fishy enough to where they might just toss in a raise and see if he can withstand it. Locke getting the better of the man who leads the way. A much needed win for the man from America. More to follow after the break. Not much change on the leaderboard of the big game four. 
Channing leads the way with Williamson and Viff are not far behind. Phil Locke still near the bottom of the pile, but starting to make a move. Even Luke Schwartz has started to rally, but he's got a long way to go. That's when I first put her there. You see it when I first put I saw the card. I, I didn't remember. At what point of the hand did you see the card? Just, I mean, listen, help help them develop a better system for us to display Anytime our hands. I say, I tell you how about it. After the hand or before? Dude. I dare you. How about that? Always That's the only time I've seen it. Pass. It's the only card I've seen you. Okay. Call. Cool. I mean, you got to admit it was a little scary if you were me. Eight hundred. Raised to eight hundred total. Oh. There's Call. just sort of an indication that the wolf is not treating this. Uh, <laughs> this. Last half all of his, in. who's gone all in? So Steele's all in. This is right. This is pretty much a uh, no-brainer play here in this situation. And Locke wants a count. What price do you need here for the seven? You know, you're oh, thirty-five hundred. It's a super easy call if uh, he isn't fearing anybody else behind him, which he obviously does have them left to act. But they didn't re-raise, so. Uh, but given the $3,500 potential, well, I guess it's only three because I don't think he's going to expect my, uh, Guy Steele to reach into his pocket and pull out 500 pounds after he busted him. So <laughs> <laughs> if he busts him with a seven twos, that would be a little low. So I think there's only 3000 in dead money in well, here. You say super easy call. Um, you're, not, you're expecting Steele to show up with an overpair quite often here. Aren't you? Well, I think his range is pretty wide. I mean, he is smart enough to, to, uh, you know, to know that you know some small pairs here are good. You know, hands just like suited Broadway stuff like that. He could be shoving, uh, you know, ace queen, ace jack. Phil's not too big a dog to those hands. And when you throw three thousand or thirty-five hundred, depending on how they shake this out into the pot, uh, combined with the dead money from the calls, I think you can make the call. But like I said, he, you know, he, he folded, and I don't blame him because he had a couple players left to act behind him, and they could be trapping with some big hands. But I think if it's just down to those two, I think he's got a call. Uh, Steele gets another one through and starting to be up to his high point. I think it's definitely a, uh, a call if it was just those two heads up, but he was obviously concerned about the other two guys making a... Another raise. Roland raised that last pot up uh, to about 800 pounds with the 7-9 offsuit. Uh, starting to be an indication that he's he's dusting off his stack in a big way. The uh, about six or seven thousand pounds worth. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, you I'm a little bit surprised he hasn't increased his stack, yeah, topped, topped up topped maybe up. to 18 or to 20, but. Uh, Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin. You know, the chips are flying around, and, you know, you hate to bomb through three or four <laughs> buy-ins of 20,000 pounds. So. Well, no, well, yeah, that aside, if Roland's uh, not having that sort of issue, he's been playing so many pots with Ellis, he wants to cover Ellis. Been playing so many pots with Phil in position, he wants to cover Phil. If you ever going to make it, you would have made it by now. You know, I don't know. That's what it seemed like. I, yeah, I can't get it now. And but I do this is no, it's not that you can't. It's the kind <laughs> of spots that, that you Williamson is looking Stop for. If you were going to get it, you would have got oh. it already. We're going to say we've uh, officially seen uh, David Viffer know, kind of uh, put on the brakes there a little bit. Maybe he's right really right starting to feel the effects of the fatigue, but we haven't been uh, seeing him in a whole lot of pots lately. Uh, Good call. Yeah, and and he's he's even managed, if I'm not mistaken, to fold a hand that <laughs> you'd have to put the tire irons on him to get him to fold earlier. That three seven suited, which was which was well part of his I don't know, super weird range. So the turn was the worst card in the deck for Channing, and this is gonna cause him to lose some money. God. Channing is I'm sort of a, a, a master at not slaughtering off his stack where others have fallen. What is, how does he, 
How does he manage not to? Well, he plays plays it uh, pretty intelligently. It's going to be hard for him to get action he wants on that board, even though he does have a strong hand as strong as uh, two pair. And now, Williamson cannot but call. Yeah, at this point, he's actually hating his hand. He realizes that his hand, he thinks it only catches a bluff for the most part. Uh, you know, he thinks that Channing's probably calling with a flush draw. And, uh, I don't think he puts him on a big hand unless it's a flush. So I think he's going to just have to call. I don't see him getting away from it getting that price. Yeah, it was. Uh, what chases up do you have? But uh, he did play that hand like he could have had a flush draw at Channing. And what clever. Williamson found the call. Lead us, leader. No, it doesn't. It does. So we probably probably shouldn't mention it. If anyone finds out, it takes 34 hours to play this many hands. The, the dirt challenge is in a bit of trouble. <laughs> So funny how things change, Dusty. You, you were at this game in the beginning, and Viffer and Luke were, they were two of the sickest players getting it in six spots. Here they are back, they got bigger stacks, but it's still the same two guys. And are they the two tightest players at the table over the last uh, 50 hands, 100 hands, that kind of thing? They have been exceptionally tight lately, and uh, you know, I think a lot of it, I, I don't think Luke should really have some fatigue. I think he's pretty well rested for this okay, session. All in. Uh, to me, this is just a, Pass. this is, feels like a really losing play. <laughs> I mean, right? Viffer hasn't, now, I mean, he's Pass. in pretty good shape, Roland, but Viffer hasn't re-raised in forever. Locke comes flying in with a cold call, and, and Roland shoves with the ace jack. <laughs> That's pretty, uh... How much did you bet? He's pretty optimistic play, but <laughs> he's going to get just unbelievably lucky. I don't see how. Uh, I, I think Locke's going to have a really hard time getting away from this. Yeah. yeah, and he calls. Yeah, I mean, lucky to be in a race, you know. Even though we've seen an ace and a jack passed. Roland hates his hand. I think he'll be pleasantly surprised when they flip the cards over. Hey, wait, don't, don't do it yet. Yeah, we got to get the proof. Five and five. 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 He looks so tired. What is he? <laughs> he hasn't been in this game very long. <laughs> you can't be tired, Roland. These are poker players, though. You never know what they did before they came here. <laughs> They're going to run it twice. And so I guess on the average, they'll split it. Pair is the favorite here, and we know that uh, an ace was folded. Yeah, and a, and a jack. Yeah, so he's only looking at four outs twice. And they run the, f the full board the second time, don't they? Yeah, that's two full boards, so lock to bust to wolf. <laughs> wow, this is a <laughs> nasty flop. And a straight draw. <laughs> I have a straight draw, too. Comes the river. He do. And Locke wow. holds twice. I told you. Bill's going to win about uh, 200,000 straight. That's not well, good. I think the wolf didn't, doesn't like the game anymore because 20,000 pounds in and done. Roland the wolf, big game number four. It was fun, you know, just hanging out with the, the guys, having the food on the table was fun, and uh, Neil, and we all had a lot of fun together, so that was probably the most fun part of the day. But we'll, uh, we'll see them again next time. See you. All change at the top of the table of the big game four. Roland DeWolf takes a break to limit his losses. Phil Locke moves into profit for the first time in a long while. Schwartz still suffering at the bottom. New blood about to be introduced to the table. Coming into seat number one, it's a new face here for the big game, Andres Ruiz.
Of course, it's the Italian stallion from Spain. Uh, Andres Ruiz. <laughs> Welcome to the game. <laughs> and uh, for 5,000 pounds, he's been waiting in the wings for a while, a qualifier, and they've dealt him straight in. <laughs> and uh, if I'm to understand and I, I, that his, his English is... His English is, 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 is quite poor, so I think the guys have decided that the complexity of explaining the seven deuce to him um, might be just outweighed in general by the... I think, I think they basically decided to cancel the seven deuce temporarily. Um, I think tournament director Mad Marty Wilson spent about a half hour with him trying to explain the seven deuce and... <laughs> really didn't get didn't, yeah. get, didn't get very <laughs> far. <laughs> yeah, and you might have to spend a half hour more explaining him why it was five hundred dollars because some guy wanted to. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, probably a wise decision to scrap that. That's the best. And so Ruiz, first sort of premium hand we've seen him pick up. Yeah, and with all that money in the pot, I think uh, that's one where he just needed to go ahead and ship it all in. But you don't want to hate to get up just right on the show and ship all your money in and get stacked off and have to leave. So, yeah, you know, that, that plays a factor in the decision. Check. Check. Hopefully he doesn't get outplayed here, which would be real easy to do because he's only has second pair, but as we know, he's got the strongest hand, so... Well, see if he can get to show down here. Viffers just bet, you know, basically nearly the pot. And for Ruiz, it's like half his stack. So, yeah, yeah, you, you know, I figured something like that might happen. So did Viffer. There is, you know, like, you know, like I say, again, I can hardly fault, uh, fault him for not putting a stack in. But I, I do think. Uh, the appropriate play was to just go ahead and shove all the money in pre-flop. Yeah, you know, he's, what is he? He's probably been waiting around here for, for two days, waiting to play in this game. He gets in this game. It's, the game is huge. Schwartz has really been a ghost sort of like figure. Uh, since he came back. Now, he's ahead about 12 grand. Well, here he comes. Hasn't really played that many hands. And now it goes to war with the Jack-9. What's it mean? Well, he's one of those players I'm not always sure he, he knows what he's uh, going to do before he does it sometimes. And Locke uh, is going to st stay uh, sticky to the pot and try and outplay him or flop something here with the 10 deuce of clubs. Is that or he's been hanging out with Doyle Brunson too much. <laughs> yeah, it's just weird how this pot came together. I mean, yeah. I mean I, you're, try, you're trying your best to get inside people's heads. I'll tell you what you're doing. You're having a hell of a stab at it. <laughs> When you call when you call with a ten deuce of clubs, there's no better flop basically you can hope for than uh, yeah. no better action flop. So, and, I suspect and Locke will play this one pretty fast. And Schwartz with the up and down. Schwartz with the up and down. Ruben with top pair. So, we're gonna see some action here. So Here, I'll give change. Luke bet the 850 pounds, which is just over half pot, and called called by Ruben and Phil. And I think and Phil should have should have played this fast. Now he's sort of the guy in position in this hand. Well, a lot of the reason why I like playing it fast there, if I'm Phil, is you can get it in with worse worse draws sometimes. So you might raise that flop and have a king jack or a jack nine play back against you and 
you know, you're ahead of all those hands. So uh, I don't mind uh, when you have kind of a draw that is ahead of a lot of the other draws that could be excited about their hand as well. I don't mind just pumping the flop and go ahead and playing for the whole enchilada. This is this pot's getting really weird. I mean, now. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I said weird, but Luke sh did slip it. He's he slipped it. Uh, a lock did not see that Ruben had raised, or he did. What? Maybe he did see, and That's it was just I such thought. a big raise that he wasn't calling. Wow. Was yeah, I, I think at that point he felt Ruben was committed, and uh, he just flat out didn't have the odds to continue. Ruiz, the latest man into the fray of the big game four, but competition is fierce with Locke, Viffer, Channing, and Williamson all flexing their respective muscles. Neil Channing still setting a relentless pace at the top of the leaderboard of the big game four. Ruiz, the latest recruit, still finding his feet, while Luke Schwartz, the man, feeling the pain at the moment. It's kind of amazing how everyone sort of come back down to I don't know, back down to touch, is that possible? Sort of a Viffer, his stack seems to be shrinking back down. Neil, he's been up a lot more. Because actually Phil Locke is, I guess he's made the most money as far as where he was. His stack's up to 50 grand. Yeah, he's been the big winner over the, last, over the short term. Last few hours. <laughs> Winning the that? poker news pot with an $800 straddle would <laughs> have something to do with that. Locks made this 1300 sort of has come back around to him on the straddle. And one of those spots where there's a lot of hands in play. Yeah, we've got a lot of hands that people really like to see flops with here. Sorry. Nothing super strong enough to want to really get all the money in preflop. So I see a really big multi-way pot coming here. Yeah, I said I said lock. The truth is, it was Viffer from the from the button with the ace queen. It's brought everybody in, and this pot five thousand three hundred. So lots of possibilities here. And trouble for Schwartz. Hey? Yeah. We've been yeah. waiting for that uh, Schwartz yeah, versus Viffer confrontation. Um, it, 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 is there is there is there any chance of them getting it in? It's. Uh, I I don't think. Uh, well, it, it's certainly possible. It depends on what he puts him on. If he puts him on a draw here, he might just ship a uh, ace jack if Viffer raises. I think Viffer has raised. I'm not sure how much it is. This is one of those spots where Schwartz hates to fold. Nice. You know, Viffer was telling me on the break, he doesn't know how to play good hands. <laughs> he doesn't know what people think when he actually has good hands and raises. So if he like goes for it, if he goes for it, he's gone. I mean, Viffer's made the big, big raise. He wants to put it in so bad. He's got him on a flush draw. Viffer's just licking his chops. He knows he's on something real marginal, and he'll be drawn really bad. You know, Schwartz bet two into five, and Viffer stuck 13 in. Um, it's a big raise even for Viff. The thing is, as loose as Viffer is, this is never just a total bluff. I shouldn't say never a Viffer, but it's rarely is. He's gone for it. He is gone. There's a backdoor heart draw. Guys, they got to get a foreman to agree. Yeah. We want to run twice. And what was the, what what happened? Well, I mean, it's Viffer, and uh, I just think he puts a very large uh, percentage of his range there on uh, flush draws. And he, you know, it's it's not a, not necessarily a bad call. A lot of 
A lot of people are going to go, go broke there against Biffer. That's why the power of his aggressive play is just so important when he actually does make a hand like that. Even paid off. Yeah, and even uh, Schwartz has sat here back down for a couple hours. Um, you know, waiting for a spot, and the spot he found is trouble. What is he? He's Yeah, he's in big, big trouble. Yeah, he's sick to his stomach right now. They're going to run it twice, and not a great chance of, of Schwartz winning either one. He's not winning this one. Uh, he needs to catch a good card on the turn yeah. in this second pot to even have a draw. Uh, I don't so think that's a good one. Dead again. Yeah. Certainly is. Full flush. Not liking his return here. No. Looks like Viffer fully flushed his bankroll down the toilet there and <laughs> sent him home. And uh, for Viffer, wow, that was a big pot. That was 58,000 pounds in that pot. He sat there. He's done very little the last couple hours and has just won one of the biggest pots of the night. Uh, I didn't go too well. I lost a couple of blinds. I mean, Viff is a good player. He, he's probably the most, the toughest player on the table. Um, but I still feel like we have a good, good edge against him in the ring. As the clock ticks down towards the 48 hour mark, it's Neil Channing who is enjoying a real purple patch around this table. You can't help but feel that Viffer, who has been up and down this leaderboard, will be on the rise again soon, while Schwartz heads for the door, over 27K down. Channing and Viffer are determined to fight it out to the end, and Robert Williamson has rejoined the table. But there's still plenty of big names waiting for their chance, and plenty of action left to come on the Party Poker Big Game. They've come and gone with mixed fortunes along the way. It's not for the faint-hearted or for those weak in body and mind. Only the toughest survive the grueling test that is the big game. <laughs>